Hi everybody, this is Angel Arts, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Interview the finalists for the upcoming Wizarding World of Harry Potter tabletop campaign. I am here with our next celebrity finalist, Andy. <laughs> The, the one and only street magician celebrity himself. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how Lucky Jack's like looking around. I, I, I want to make sure that I'm on the right side of this little square <laughs> thingy when I oh, do that. Oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah. And as you can see, um, the guest interviewer today is a blast from the past. It is Lucky Jack 20 himself. Hey! <laughs> you uh, may know Lucky Jack from... Uh, the first season of Dragon Age, he played Lielden. Um, in addition to uh, doing some voice acting work for me for uh, the VA Let's Play Earthbound, um, as well as a bunch of Let's Talks from uh, from the Walking Dead, uh, Telltale's Walking Dead series. So Logan and I, we've gone all way back, but yeah. he's returned again to help me with this. So thank you, Lucky Jack. So um, I'm just going to step back and uh, let you handle it from here. OK. All right. Uh, so I had a, a couple questions, uh, one of them being that uh, definitely was uh, interested by the idea of a street magician trying to you know, use the, use the uh, definitely uh, advantageous effects of being a natural magic caster, <laughs> but for more practical and as an entertainer myself, I can connect with the uh, joy of bringing smile and delight to other people through that. Were there any, um, uh, or have you ever had that uh, desire to entertain other people as well? Kind of. I've always wanted to be an actor, so mm -hmm. that's kind of a big reason why I picked an entertainer of some sort in general. Uh, as for the whole street magician aspect, I actually got a little bit of inspiration from a, my friend, a friend of mine, who does close-up magic, oh. like basically professionally. Oh. Uh, he performs at clubs and parties and stuff like that. Um, and everywhere we go, he <laughs> he performs magic. We can't go to a restaurant without him doing it. I'm like, we're playing billiards. There he is with other people at other tables, and I'm just <laughs> shooting pool by myself. Oh. No, it's it's. It, I definitely got inspiration from him, and I kind of started learning tricks on my own to mostly keep my fingers dexter, uh, keep the dexterity in my fingers going. Oh yeah. Typically, in like you know your old style Dungeons and Dragons, whatever dungeon crawler games, usually have like a team dynamic of like a fighter, a healer, a rogue, some sort of support class kind of character. Uh, what character in those? Is, what, what character do you think you would see yourself as a being in? Why, if so? Huh. Um, well, usually when I play uh, like D and D or Pathfinder or anything that that I can get my hands on, basically, <laughs> I tend to go for a uh, more of a fighter, uh, just because kind of like getting in the nitty gritty of of, of combat and the uh, the risk or reward. Of, uh, of, of, like I said, of combat. On the other hand, I have started recently playing other classes such as Monk and Druid. And I do kind of like the research aspect of trying to figure out how to build the best of both of those. Uh, you know, like I recently found that building like a moon druid is one of the most overpowered builds you could possibly do ever for a, for a, a spell caster. Or um, the fact that a halfling basically makes the greatest monk, even though they're like three feet tall. So, I mean, personally for me, it's, it's always kind of been go for a fighter. So we see like the knight is kind of like the hero of the story most of the time. With the exceptions of when they're not, but we'll, we won't talk about those. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then the last question I have is kind of just more of a personal, kind of just a you know, fun one that I also have on the same list. Uh, it was, uh, uh, assuming that you've had experience with J.K. Rowling's works and stuff prior to the big announcement, uh, who is your favorite character from any of her, like, Wizarding World? I don't know. For me, it has to be a tie between Hagrid... Because he's a big 
lovable teddy bear of a man. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I always forget the kid's name, but he's the one that in almost every scene he's in, there's an explosion in his face. Oh, you're talking about, um... It's, I think it starts with, it's like Figurus or something is his last name. I Seamus. Can't. Yeah. I love Seamus. Him. Seamus I, every Finnegan. time he comes in, I'm just like, something's gonna happen. He's in the background. I'm just waiting for the explosion to happen. I'm just like, please, yeah. God, let it just anything. <laughs> let him get carried away by by Buckbeak. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I've always had a soft spot for Seamus personally, but yeah, it's, yeah it's, it, you can't help it. It's like the first scene he's in. It's just an explosion in his face. I think it's a bad rap. He deserves a break at some point. Every time, and I mean, of right. course, you can never go wrong with with. Uh, with the other boy who uh, who lived, Neville. Ne yeah, Neville. I love Neville. You know, mm -hmm. he just he starts out as like this pudgy child, and then he comes back as like the actual hero of the story at the end. Right. So, Andy, um, you, as you said in your audition, um, you've played uh, tabletop gaming before, so you're fairly experienced. So my question is, how do you see yourself helping some of the other players around the table who may not be nearly as experienced as yourself? Honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm as as you've experienced, as 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 Logan here has also experienced. I'm, you know, I'm a people person. I'm, I tend to be as open as I can and as kind as I can to the other, as, to anybody else that's around me. You know, I just, I guess, in a nutshell, I'd probably just try to be as patient and is you know maybe in the off time is helpful with constructive criticism later on as i get to know everybody and i get to know how everybody plays yeah i mean honestly that's that's kind of what i would bring to the table is is a factor of a little bit of construct a constructive criticism and patience in like the character building aspect of each person speaking of constructive criticism uh what would you say, Andy, is your biggest weakness as a player? And how do you see yourself trying to overcome that weakness? Sometimes my characters can be a little too edgy, which I recently learned playing a halfling, which is weird. Because halflings, halflings are supposed to... Yeah, I was an edgy That's halfling cool. monk that wanted to... Who, who got into a fight with a raptor in an arena... Huh. Lost to the raptor, was rescued, and then days later went back to fight the same raptor and died. Oh no! I had to have like, <laughs> it, I kept rolling just horribly. It was it was awful. I missed by like point Ow. by like one one number every time. Mm. And this is with having you know the, an upgraded monk and everything. It was just like no. That raptor was training. That that raptor was ready. It knew I was coming back. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's one of my biggest problems. And uh, there's also a factor, uh, two other small factors of like, I do tend to, if I'm not active in a campaign for a short, a certain amount of time, I tend to just kind of like zone out sometimes. Mm. Okay. Not on purpose. It's just a fact. It's just you know, my brain just kind of like clicks off into autopilot, and I'm I'm there and I'm paying attention, but I'm also not at the same time, which is kind of a downside. Um, and I've also never finished a campaign, so you know, if I end up making it into this, this would probably be the first one that I've actually gone all the way through. I I hope so because three people, including one in Lo Logan's campaign, said that they had never finished a campaign either <laughs> until they did my campaign. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping yeah. the streak continues. Fingers <laughs> crossed, you know. Uh, and then my last question for you, Andy, is what do you hope to get out of this experience? What do you personally hope to gain or get out of the? you know, experience of playing in this game with us? For the most part, just building on my on my knowledge of tabletop games. And in fact, I actually wanted to, after learning about this and reading through 
uh, all the the booklets for it, which I got to reread through again. But uh, actually, I wouldn't mind running my own campaign of this eventually, and I kind of want to learn how it works and you know figure out the ins and outs of it and possibly run my own in the future. Uh, other than that, like I said, just building my craft and learning how to, you know, further improvise when needed. Um, all right. So now uh, this would then be the part where we get to the more practical element of the interview, where uh, I'm going to uh, ask that we do a little uh, practice role play session then. It's more of a character interaction that I'd be curious about uh, would be that we learned that Jackson uh, did street magic uh, for a while before he decided to attend school. Is that correct? Kind of. I think what I was kind of trying to go for is that it was more of a he had no other choice in the matter. He would get caught and then subsequently have to go to Elvermorny for a uh, Instead of going to, like, I guess, whatever the Wizarding World's equivalent of Juvie would be. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that that's a thing. That I'm sure that, I'm sh yeah, it's like, it's like Azkaban for juniors. Azzy, little, little Azzies, they call yeah, it. Yeah, little Azzies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> See, be so okay. But, um, it has, like, a little okay. cutesy sign outside. Yes. As, as, Azzy Jr. Azkaban yeah. Jr. Yeah. <laughs> little Azzies. <laughs> Now I'm just imagining little Dementor cloak just kind of like walking around. They can't fly like little yet. Little toddler just... Dementors. Little toddler Dementors, yes. <laughs> anyway. Like four feet tall, still intimidating. <laughs> right. So this would be, say, a week, week and a half prior to when you knew that, when Jackson knew he would have to at some point attend an actual academy to better his skills and that he couldn't just do the street magic he can just keep that up all full time kind of thing okay and the character that i was thinking of playing would be a boy by the name of charlie who had come to be really really like just enamored by uh seeing jackson do this like performance every day like after school he would like run down to the street corner you could almost always like recognize him in the crowd of people or you know small crowd people watching the uh, up close magic happening. He uh, Jackson has been doing his normal trade. People are plotting. People have been uh, getting, you know, definitely uh, entertained by what's been going on. People have been coming and going uh, throughout the day. Charlie then had run, uh, ran over from school, ready to watch some more. Had gotten definitely his fair share of uh, the tricks and stuff being shared. And then uh, this would take place soon, right at probably just around the time when Jackson was starting to clean up and uh, prepare to, you know, leave to go elsewhere, having finished his, you know, shift of uh, street magic there. I'm going to go find a new corner. <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. So, um, so let's see. So then uh, Charlie would then probably approach once the crowd has started to dissipate a little bit. Gosh, Jackson, it seems like your work's getting better almost every week. How do you keep doing that, keeping up getting all that new material? Uh, you know, magician never reveals his greatest secrets. They always say that. But there's something. Di I, there's <laughs> gotta be something different. The other guy, oh, only other magic guy knows that old fart down at the shop with the card trick. Everyone knows by right now. That's true. I guess uh, maybe a little bit of me isn't entirely like all the other uh, old farts that uh, perform magic around here. I, I can't. I, I, my friends at school don't believe me about all the stuff that I can. I, I've seen happen here. I gotta. I gotta take them all to see your new stuff next week. You're gonna be here next week, right? Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, this is, this is gonna be one of my last shows. Here, like, yeah. wait. So you'll, you'll just be on like Seventh and Madison now, or like? <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, I'm going upstate for. A few a while. I got in a little bit of trouble with some people that you definitely don't want to get involved with, and 
Lo and behold, I have to go to a boarding school, basically. But like, they'll still they'll still let you do this, right? It's not just gonna be boring books all day, right? I don't know. God, I hope not. God, I hope not. This is like we uh, both know is... I hate books. <laughs> <laughs> This is like, well, dang. I mean, I hope that whatever they do, they let you still keep doing this. This looks like, I can, I can tell this isn't just for us. This is this is something you like too. It is. It definitely is. I mean, money doesn't hurt. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Tell you what, I will show you at least one of my tricks. His eyes get all you know wide, like, and like he just like gets up all close, like private show kind of thing. All right, I gotta Give me one second. I gotta find a box. <laughs> Slide a little box over so I can uh, adjust. You know, both of us having a good view of the of the cards, and I spread them all out so you can see all the numbers. And then I ask him to shuffle the deck so that he doesn't have any, you know, mm -hmm. issues with it. Does that all up? Puts yeah. in a little pile. I, I fan the cards out one more time, or this time in my hand. Tell him to pick one card. Pick one, picks one more towards his right hand, but more, all but right. you know, kind of level still. As I'm fanning it, it appears in the other hand. Just it's, like kind of like it looks so like just, Yeah, just kind of like unfans in the other hand. And I'm like, all right, put the card back into this one. Puts that in. I go and I reshuffle the deck. And at the top of the and I snap my fingers over the top of the deck. And tell him to take the card on the top. They like peels it up, make, making sure there was nothing like weird that was out there, but then <laughs> takes the card off. And I'm like, well, was that it? How, how'd you like get all the way on the other hand then? That was. You see, and I'm as I'm as he's amazed by this trick, I just lean in and I'm like, it's a special deck, and I want you to have it. And. All you gotta do is think really hard about the, the, the number that you want to be there and it'll appear on that card. That's it. That's it. More or less. At least that's what I figured. He takes the deck, looks it over, and just like shuffles it around a few times, picks up the card again, Puts it down, shuffles it again. Just getting more and more like... What? This is amazing! I was... I mean, real magic exists in some facet. You just gotta believe, little man. And I like tousle his hair, and then I pack up my money and I just kind of walk off. While he's just standing on a street corner amazed by this. I'm just like... Hmm. I guess he would. Um, last thing like, that I could think of. Last thing that I could think of would be that. Um, just touched and inspired by this moment, he calls out after Jackson saying, "One day I'm gonna be the one performing for you." Yeah, I'm sure, kid. And then I just like Batman my way out. Of there. <laughs> <laughs> he like turns away, and I'm just gone. Oh, he just looks away. Here's, He's just the gone. Classic, the classic no thing is a car. Long, he looks like... Yeah, I'm just long. Does he know I'm just behind a dumpster? Like, oh god, I shouldn't have done that. I'm, I'm gonna sure. be in so much trouble. Sure. What's another month? What's another three months or so? I don't know. <laughs> What's another muggle that knows our card tricks? <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty good for what I got there. What do you think? And then 
One week later, Charlie has the deck. He's over at Reno, Las Vegas. And... <laughs> He's the youngest magician known to man. I was thinking he was hitting the blackjack. I was tables. about to say he could do yes. He swaps them magic. out for other blackjack cards. Yes, the greatest exactly. magic trick known to man. Pull the perfect flush every time. Every time. Every time. Hmm. I guess I do have one follow up question after seeing that um, scene. I guess I wanted to get Andy's perspective on what he thinks are going to be the major hardships or challenges that uh, Jackson is going to have during his first year at school. What do you foresee is going to be the things that will really be an Um, issue for him? Well, for starters, not really knowing a lot about the world that he's about to enter into. He only knows whatever his mother told him and whatever he's learned. So, like, the bare minimum and, like, what Quidditch is, and that's about it. (laughs) Um, And also, not knowing his entire lineage is also going to be a slight issue. Knowing that there's going to be people there that are full-blooded and probably really pretentious, preppy types. He's kind of like a rebel without a cause, so to speak. So it's going to be more him trying not to uh, get into more trouble and getting through his studies and understanding like further uh, the world around him and developing more as a wizard. Do you have a personal goal for your character, do you think? Um, yeah, kind of. I, I think... In the end, I want him to kind of become like an aura of, uh, you know, because I figured starts out this rebellious kid, ends up basically the wizard police. Huh. Would kind of be like a nice little arc of like development for him. You know, he, he show it would show like how he's grown as a, you know, as a character and as a from like a child like an early teenager to like an adult and understanding that like some rules need to be enforced for the betterment of both groups you know that that's kind of the biggest thing that i want him to as a character i want him to go through maybe if you know somehow he can read a book and find out you know how to track his own lineage find out who his missing father is but that's not really a big deal to him because he's gone like 12 years without the guy anyways so whatever (laughs) um but yeah hey everyone jackson here soon to be over morning student and uh quite frankly i think you guys should pick me because i'd make an excellent aura that or you know i'll make your cat disappear one of the two (laughs) have a wonderful night day whatever time you guys end up watching this later